All right, gang, welcome back. I got Julius here with me. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, man, and we're gonna go ahead and try to um get some uh, training going on today. It's his first day with, uh, with me. So yeah, we're gonna be doing, uh, we got two maintenance scheduled for today, and um, I think two blower motors. Was this is my fourth day. I went out with uh, my first my first job with you guys. I worked with Omar and Alejandro, and we did, uh, we did a bunch of duct work. We had to reinstall a bunch of duct work and reinstall a whole unit, too, on top of that. Um, Nice. And that was a long day, but uh, man, I had a blast. I, I, can't, I come from warehouse work, and um, it's kind of the same thing every day. I drive equipment and stuff. I take one pallet from one spot to another. I was just getting tired of it. Mm. So um, when I found out about trades and stuff, there was a couple that fell, it fell in my, my interest, and, and HVAC kind of had a good mix of all of it. So I was like, man, can I can I really do this? Can mm. I? I was like, can I? Uh, it seems like it sounds like a lot, man. Going from warehouse work to, to the trade world, it, it, it's a big adjustment. I feel like you know, because you're. You're necessarily going from a job to what's next, what's a craft to, to many people in this world. Yeah. So yeah. Is it, is it yes, sir. <laughs> so what I like to do is essentially start with the thermostat okay. and check your filters. So we can see our filters are pretty dirty. Okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I think yeah. we'll just pull it. Yeah, that's, that's another nice. trick. Anytime you um want to do it on high places, put the fan on. You know, just pull it up in there. Oh, is that why you turn that on? Yes, sir. Uh, it's like, yeah, you know, like you yeah. gotta care about the stuff you're putting in. You gotta care about, you know, the, the way it looks, the way it's gonna be put together. Because you're not only thinking about your work, but it's someone's home. So, you know? Yeah, exactly. So it, it's a big mindset change too. People gotta be prepared for that. And that's one thing I was trying to constantly tell myself: Am I ready? Am yeah. I ready? And that's how I found your stuff. Because nice. I was because I was looking into videos. Nice. I was like, I'm just people in the field that had that type of advice. Because it's scary, I think, for anybody trying to make a change. Um, in their life and as far as their career goes. All right, so essentially we've got, uh, this is a furnace. You've got an evaporator coil on top of the furnace. The evaporator coil is what's giving you your heat rejection. This is pulling the heat out of the actual airstream. Okay. So the this furnace has a blower down here. The blower is pulling air through these. These are your return runs. So remember we just replaced two filters. Yeah. One's gonna be connected to this. Essentially that's gonna be that uh, kid's room and then our bedroom one is gonna be running over there. So it's pulling air from those two returns through the filtration, then it's pushing it up through this cabinet. There's a heat exchanger behind here. The air is being discharged, forced, put discharged up through the uh, cabinet here, which uh, you can see that's your furnace, but behind here is gonna be a heat exchanger, and then it'll have to go up through this evaporator coil, which is another heat exchanger. Only difference is, instead of adding heat to the airstream, it's actually removing heat from the airstream. So a lot of times people have the understanding that the uh, AC is making the air cold when actually it's pulling heat out, essentially. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so that's it's not a big fan that's cooling off the air. It's literally just taking the heat out of it. Exactly, wow. yeah. So that, uh, that fan stopped, so you can look down in there now and see. You can uh, put your hand and kind of wiggle that whole cage, uh, not the cage, but the, bl the blade itself and see if there's any play in it. That checks the bearings. Usually there's no play. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. I don't see no wiggle. Exactly. Pretty, She's solid. What, what what typically causes something like this to go bad? If the blower motor? Yeah, if it's getting run by this little bitty capacitor right here, what else is? Usually the internal windings fail. Mm -hmm. uh, they could overheat. Um, or you've got also, I've seen plenty of them where the, the motor itself just locks up, wow. essentially, just due to the bearings failing. Okay. I'm going to cut it back on. So it's all kind of mechanical stuff within the part itself. That's a good idea. And that was R. Always like to remember what fan speed we want. So we're on red for our fan speed, so that's gonna be low. And um, we can see our psychrometers. We've got a 21 degree split, which is amazing. That's good to me. You want it to be between probably 18 and 23 degrees, 24 degrees split, supply air. This is my psychrometer readouts, right? So you can see our return air is 65, supply air, DB means dry bulb, it's okay. 44. Dry bulb just means just regular air. Wet bulb is like, it's a little more complicated, but that's air that if you have like a wet sock over the therm uh, your um, thermal couple, and that's just um, for humidity okay. um, referencing. So this is actually measuring those two devices we just put in? Yes, sir. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. And do you have like any preconceived ideas of what, what preference you might have as far as install or service, or do you just kind of well, take measure? Well, this, this is what I, I told, uh, so whenever I called Mitchell about the job and everything like that, because I found him, and uh, I was kind of just pleading my case to him. I was like, hey, you know, I'm young, but I'm, I'm 
willing to learn and I'm willing to work for you. You nice. know, if you want to give me the tools or not, I, I'll figure it out. You know. Nice. So, but um, with that being said, he had kind of told me he was like, "Yeah, I, I really want to, to to set people up on a path to learn this stuff and, and and have a good understanding of it." So he was like, "I want to push you mainly on install because I think that's how you should learn." Yeah. And then definitely. eventually you can go your own path with that. So I, I've expressed to him I love just the the idea of service and maintenance. Uh, yeah. But of course, if install is going to help me learn more, I'm down for it. it you know? And it even does. and even I think too just as learning the tool and the handiwork and everything I think yeah. I think I'll, I think doing install really helps with that too yeah it does it gives you a nice foundation I mean I think we all start up I start up on install as well I mean I've only done I've probably only for a year or so but it's um I definitely appreciate having that foundation because it'll give you just the the bigger picture you know and then the service is giving you kind of like a deeper dive into the, the nuances and the uh you know all the different aspects but it's good to have both both sides of it so now what we want to do is check our static pressure okay you look anything to static pressure yet so that's resistance of the airflow right you got it okay. yeah you want, to, you want to get as minimal as possible with that, yes right? sir yeah so what we're going to do this is what you call a manometer you just go ahead and pop a hole into the side there over here anywhere yeah over here oh yeah that's probably what, yeah sorry put it through here my apologies so, so am I looking for whenever I'm trying to measure the static pressure on a manometer? I'm looking for this hole, right? On the side. Yeah, usually you will actually have to make a hole with this step bit here. Okay. Um, as we did, so you can see there's a hole over here already on the top because we're going to check the gotcha. supply as well. Gotcha. For returns, you can usually find a hole in the returns where the um, lines are going in at. As we see, we've got 0.24. You can keep that there for a sec. Now we do supply. You can pull that out real quick, please. And then so pop is that good or bad? It's actually yeah. decent. It's decent actually. You want a total of point, no more than 0.5, which is what's on the data plate of this furnace. You can actually read it here. Okay. Oh yeah, there she goes. Max static pressure. Gotcha. 0.5. Wow. So, we got 0.24 there. What do we have on our supply? 0.33. Okay. Jackpot. So does, does that sound pretty decent to you? Yeah. 0.57. I'd say that's pretty respectable. So you add the two together? Yeah. Okay, and that's you, your overall uh, static, right? Exactly. Wow, so that's not bad. Even though one of them is negative, because the, the air is being sucked in on this side and it's being pushed out on this side, you just add them together because it's essentially, it's basically both, it's still resistance. Whether it's positive or negative pressure, it's going to be a resistance of flow. So what, what, sorry, so what would happen if, it, if those numbers were a little higher than the one? Is that going to be an issue or is that something we just got to document? We have to document it. Usually, um, we do want to kind of do a brief if we see it like above 0 0.7, 0 0.8, okay. we're going to want to do some inspecting of the ductwork. See, usually it's due, here in the Carolinas, it's due to being undersized. I mean, I'd say probably 80, 90% of the furnace in the Carolinas are going to have uh, undersized ductwork. So that's something we definitely just want to document if it does want it being undersized. But if there's a lot of times you might find a collapse, someone might have stored something on top of these and it just be this, you'll see this flat in a spot or, you know, you might have too many dampers off. Another thing as well, sometimes the homeowner will close a lot of the registers off in the house. You know, close those vents that we put the uh, psychrometer in, okay. and that will cause it to essentially have a high st static pressure on this side. Okay. The cool thing about it is you'll be able to tell where your issue is. If you have a high number on this side, it's going to be in this one of these ducts, because right? Was this our return? Yeah, okay. absolutely. If you have it on that side, you know it's going to be on the side of the plenum here. Cool. You see what I mean? So you can kind of assess which one it is. Just exactly. On which one what, what, what are some uh, what are some positives? What are some advantages and, and stuff you've seen when you've worked in our transition to the field? What are some things that you've enjoyed that that make you think to yourself, yeah, I want to stay in this field. I can see myself loving it for, for a long, long, long time. Yeah, I mean, I think it's not for everyone in that sense that, um, like me personally, I like the fact that most of the time I pretty much work by myself. So I can learn. I could be you know, listening to podcasts, listening to videos while working. Not to mention, like I said earlier, just the fact that you're um, actually appreciated for what you know, your skill set, rather than just being kind of a number. You know, just That's, being. That's yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like. That's well put. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it does help to keep you motivated, keep you just driving forward. And, you know, and the monetary compensation is definitely a plus as well. You know, you just, just as, your, as that appreciation is um, increased.
increases, then your pay will increase. I'd like to go ahead and uh, check my bolts and amps. So here we've got, this is your main wiring that's okay. wiring the board. There's a board here, a control board back behind this here cover. So this is just your main feed. So let's go ahead and pop that around your hot leg. So we've got, as you can see on our meter, showing 6.4 amps. But that's the blower, that's, that's close enough. I'm not gonna lie about it, but you're usually gonna be about 0.3 amps high because the, the contactor and the board, the transformer essentially, everything on the low voltage side is pulling about 0.3 amps. Okay. That's closer to 6.1 amps. We check our voltage, make sure our voltage is good. So we could be having low voltage coming in, we could be having high voltage coming in. Usually low voltage is more of a common concern. So we just put our probes in here, right? Be careful so when doing this. Are you seeing this or am I in the way? Am I no, you're good, I'm seeing it. So one, one set is the high voltage, the other set's the low, right? That's oh yeah, so one is going to be your neutral. Okay. Which is essentially, it's not a ground, but it's just a, this is this black is the hot leg. You okay. will not get electrocuted if you do the new touch the neutral. Okay. But just don't. But either way, this is checking reference between the two. It's checking voltage between this ground this here and this neutral. So we've got 121 volts, right? Okay. So six amps at 121 volts. My dad had always told me this, and this is some, some really good advice that gave me confidence. Yeah. Um, he asked me three simple things whenever I doubt my my, my, my worth ethic as far as stacking it on this. He tells me, he asked me these three questions. He's like, can you pass a drug test? I'm like, yes. He's like, okay, uh, can you show up on time? I said, yeah. And he's like, and can you work? And I was like, yes. He's like, are you physically capable? Yeah. You know, and I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you sounds like you got a job somewhere. And I'm like, <laughs> you know? So he's like, I'm telling you, man. He's like, it's really hard to find find that nowadays. Like, the, and, you know, yeah, people, that's a fact. Pe people tend to think you gotta be Superman sometimes, you know, but yeah, it, we really cool. are more average than we think, and that's not a bad thing. You can go ahead and grab this out of here. Let's go ahead and clean out this drain port. Drain. Oh, you're cool. Yeah, this here, this is gonna be for your evaporator coil drain condensation. How do I go about cleaning this? That little cap there. Okay. Yep, pop that right off. And what that is, is it's a P-trap. So what it's doing is this water being collected in this P-trap. All right, so now if you'd like to do, you can go ahead and pull this door off. As it's running, you can pull it right off. Boom. Oh, wow. So we see we've got it taped up, okay. so that way it's running. Oh, because if it's not taped up, it wouldn't It'll, be running. Yep, there's power. a safety switch here. So always look out for that when you're, if you're doing service, make sure you, because if you turn the power off here, um, at this power switch, there's a power switch on here, okay. you might not know that that's taped up so you might turn it back on and touch the hot line so just always look out for that we got a 40 microfarad capacitor down there so let's go ahead now find our power switch we're gonna hit the power so we can check this capacitor oh here it is well, that's nice. so you're gonna huh. always see these these are prone to failure as well okay okay these are one of them these are pretty common thing you're gonna be replacing it's just like a little regular light switch okay so now that that's off I always like to just do a non-contact test. Make sure it's good, right? Yeah, it's all in it. That's not, there's no power in that. So we'll go to microfarads for our capacitor, MFD. Okay. And if you want to pull these two terminals off, off of the capacitor. You just pop them right off? Yep. Yeah. So if you want to put that on microfarads. Right, is it MFD? Yep. Perfect. Yep, there you go. Now you can put each end of the probe, each probe. Uh, Both of those. Uh, yes, sir. Are they called terminals? Yep, thirty-four point eight one okay. out of forty. So that's that's low. That's low. See, like, so it's not getting a full charge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's a low capacitance. So yeah, we're gonna wanna let the customer know. And uh, let's see. For now, we'll just put it back on so we can check so our. Does output. that mean it's bad? Yeah, it is. It's time to be replaced. Okay, replaced. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so a good capacitor will be holding a consistent charge all the time, right? And yeah, it'll show 40, 40. Like, okay. It'll show, oh, sorry, not 40. It'll show what the nameplate says. So this is 40 because we already know because it's been, I wrote that on there. Cool. Another thing too, don't be afraid to take pictures of everything you take. Gotcha. Capacitor like that doesn't matter because it doesn't matter which way you put it on, but we'll find with the, um, 
the dual capacitors. Okay. You might want to start off taking pictures of those. Anything you touch, at least me, I always take pictures That's of it anyway. Smart. I need to do that. All right, so sweet. We can go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and give it some power. Another thing I always like to do, make sure that fan is running before you leave the attic because sometimes you might forget to put the capacitor back on. This happens. Everyone's, it's happened to everyone. Got that capacitor so. running, that's not gonna kick that fan off. Right? Nope, could even burn the motor out. Wow, this is our supply, correct? Oh, that's our return. One of our returns. Yep, one of the returns, there's another return. I know the name is kind of backwards, gotcha. but just think about like it's supplying the air back to the house on the supply cool. side, and then the return. This is returning the air to the units. Right. I promise you, man, like if you, if you, um, you know, if you stick. 